Hi guys, Azure Ace here with my first countdown on my channel. I hope to do many more countdowns on the channel from here on out, however, it will definitely be a process as I have to grab clips, music, create a script and all the good stuff that comes with it. However, the first countdown I will be doing will be my top 5 hopes for Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, if you know me personally, I love Kingdom Hearts. It's my baby. I've been playing the series since I was three. Yeah, three. I couldn't even read a book at that age. I also couldn't even get past the dark side and Destiny Islands on Kingdom Hearts 1. Yeah, those were some dark times. But with Kingdom Hearts 3 news right around the corner at E3, ready to jump out and give me a heart attack, I think it's appropriate that I discuss in this top five what my five biggest hopes for Kingdom Hearts 3 are. There's no real order for this list. Some I'd like more than others, but I'd like them all equally as much. So without further ado, let's get into the countdown with... Number 5. A varied and extensive category of worlds. As we know, in Kingdom Hearts 3, there's going to be more worlds than ever and they're going to be on a bigger scale than we've ever seen before, with many new Disney movies getting put into the mixing pot of worlds, with a Big Hero 6 movie set in San Francisco and a Tangled world called Kingdom of Corona like you're seeing now, already confirmed. It's possible we may also get a third Roy Conley movie world in one of his most popular movies, Treasure Planet. Hey, psst, square, psst, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it! Oh yeah, there's the Hunchback of Notre Dame, but no one really cares about that, do they? With the current most amount of worlds in any one Kingdom Hearts game being Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix standing at 15 worlds, Kingdom Hearts 3 now has the technology and power to smash that number, with my expectation of 20 plus worlds being pretty realistic. We already know that we have returning worlds hopping on the bandwagon again, with the return of Olympus, Twilight Town and the Mysterious Tower already confirmed and worlds like Radiant Garden, The Land of Departure, The World That Never Was, Castle Oblivion and possibly even the Realm of Darkness looking likely to jump aboard for Kingdom Hearts 3. Square Enix have such a brilliant opportunity here to just show how far Kingdom Hearts has come in terms of world development and structure as well as show true to some of the fan base's favourite worlds by adding their own flair and creativity to newer worlds. Just don't include Atlantica, please don't. Number 4 New attires for most of the characters. This is something that fans have been screaming for for a pretty long time. We already have Sora's new attire which was shown at the E3 2015 trailer with a parkour type look to it, mixing elements from his Kingdom Hearts 2 and his Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance outfit together and honestly, I love it. There's also the possible theory that Roxas has taken his toll on Sora as Sora's hair looks to be a mixture of his own and Roxas's. But what I want to see are attire changes for most of the main characters with my main hopes for Riku, Kairi, Lee, Donald, Goofy, young Xehanort and most of the Seekers of Darkness. There's the hope for many that Ventus, Terra and Aqua get attire changes but honestly I don't see any sense of that happening at all. Wait, before I say this, I'm going to just put this out and cover my ass so someone doesn't claim I spoiled them. So you see this? This means there are spoilers ahead, so I'll give you a little bit to leave if you don't want spoilers. We good? Okay, so it wouldn't make sense since Aqua is in the Realm of Darkness, Ventus is sleeping in Castle Oblivion, and Terra... Terra is, um, um, inside himself with Xehanort. Yeah, I'll leave that picture with you. Number 3. All loose ends of the Dark Seeker saga must be tied up by the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, this is something pretty self-explanatory. This is something that I not only want to happen, but something that must happen in Kingdom Hearts 3. There's too many questions that are unanswered in the Kingdom Hearts mythos right now. Like, who is the sixth foreteller? Who are the rest of Master Xehanort's 13 darknesses? 
who is the master of masters? Well, Sora and Kairi's romance finally blossomed because it hurts me to see it not happening. Those sorts of questions. It's imperative that all of these questions and more be answered in Kingdom Hearts 3 to allow for a clean start to Kingdom Hearts 4 in its new saga. If Master Xehanor is a lingering presence in the new saga, it will completely ruin it as it means there will be more questions left unanswered going into the new series. I just hope that Square Enix can make the ending of the Dark Seeker saga as simple as possible while giving us all the correct answers and clarity that the series has needed for quite some time now. I don't want none of this in Kingdom Hearts 4. What? We went through all that trouble to defeat an imposter? You're damn right, Sora. You're damn right. So I want you to go and kill the real one this time. Again. None of that, please. Number 2. Please, for the love of God, add more post-story content. This is something that fans have been clamouring for. With the amount of post-story content being present in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, with there being multiple secret bosses, in the lingering will, Sephiroth, in the Organization 13 data battles to help ease you into the post-story, while still providing the initial enjoyment of Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, it should be easy for Square to add post-story content, whether it be in the form of DLC or already in the game. But that's not all that was in Final Mix. There were the puzzle pieces, which, in my opinion, were pretty fun to collect and find. Something that was a little less fun to do, however, was the Mushroom Organization 13. That was frustrating to say the least, but at the same time, it was also very challenging and fun to do, and it felt like an accomplishment to finally complete it. I'd like to see the return of Sephiroth, as Steve Burton, voice actor of Cloud Strife in the Kingdom Hearts series, having confirmed he will be doing voice acting work for Kingdom Hearts 3 soon, it would only make sense for Sephiroth to return in the final numbered title of the Dark Seeker saga, where both he and Cloud can end their feud. Another interesting secret boss that could possibly look good in Kingdom Hearts 3 is a Gilgamesh secret boss. If you don't know who Gilgamesh is, he's a character who is prominent in the Final Fantasy series who collects weapons from the warriors he defeats. An interesting concept would be if Gilgamesh showed up, let's just say in the Great Maw of Raiding Garden, where he would challenge Sora. If Sora won, Gilgamesh would leave, giving him one of his weapons possibly the great Excalibur or the Masamune Katana, but if Gilgamesh wins, Sora would give him his Keyblade to add to his collection. Great concept, right? I also hope that they include what can only be described as the next antagonist of Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 4, much like how Xemnas was the secret boss of Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix, alluding to Xemnas being the final boss and main antagonist of Kingdom Hearts 2. I want bosses who can give me a good bang for my buck and give me a real challenge like the other post story bosses have given me in the past, but there's one thing I want more in Kingdom Hearts 3 than anything and that is... Number 1. Just kill someone already! Well, it's time to stick on my hard hat and barricade the door, because I'm about to get a little bit on the fanbase's bad side. You get on their bad side and they'll destroy you! Yeah, yeah, but I digress. Characters need to die in Kingdom Hearts 3. It sounds heartless of me. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Me to say it, I know. It's a really touchy subject that will be sure to have fanboys and fangirls at my door in seconds. It is obvious that the Seekers of Darkness will all perish in Kingdom Hearts 3. That should be a given. But what must happen is a couple of deaths on the side of the Guardians of Light. If no one on this side dies, then what did the Guardians of Light have to lose in the first place? Nothing much in theory, but if people die, for example, Riku, the amount of emotional weight that would be held upon his death would be so monumental, as he is one of the most beloved characters in the franchise, one of my personal favourites. I personally feel Terra and Riku should both die in the Keyblade War. Terra should die because as of right now, he is a seeker in the form of Terranort. He should sacrifice himself for Ventus or Aqua. The emotional scenes that would occur would be so heart-wrenching with a massive feeling of empathy for Aqua and Ventus as they lose their best friend. This will show that there is much to lose in the Keyblade War and show what is really at stake. Also, if Riku is killed, 
the rage that would build within Sora would be so much. It would show us a side of Sora that we have never seen before. It may possibly even turn him into pure darkness for a small time and allow him to channel his anti-form with keyblades in hand to use against Master Xehanort. That would be pretty awesome. It's also pretty emotional stuff, isn't it? And none of this dying but coming back stuff. That's happened way too many times in the series. Way too many times. So there you have it, my top 5 hopes for Kingdom Hearts 3. It took me quite a while to make this video, so I hope you all enjoyed it. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with my list? What would you like to see in Kingdom Hearts 3? Leave it in the comment section below. Also leave a like, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to join the Azure Army today. Thank you.